County Executive Meyer, members of County Council, Judge Sleep, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Newcastle County and thank you for joining us on this virtual platform to witness this historic occasion. This ceremony is the culmination of our constitutional process. And today, as your Chief Administrative Officer for Newcastle County, I have the honor of serving as your MC. At this time, I would like to welcome Reverend Dr. Greg Jones of Westminster Presbyterian Church to lead us in the invocation. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator of all that is, we give thanks for our nation, for its bounteous resources, its diversity of people, and its foundational principles of liberty and justice for all principles that are not only for the privileged and not only for the powerful, but for all. Because each of us is one of your beloved children. On this day, we ask your special blessing on Matt Meyer as he renews his oath for office. Be a constant reminder to him that when his actions evolve from a heart of compassion and a desire for fairness, he is in harmony with your ways. Prompt him to extend himself for the well-being of others and to strive for those things that enhance the lives of everyone in our county. Mighty God, there are formidable challenges on the multiple roads ahead. Grant him insight and intelligence that he may continue to make wise decisions that enhance the quality of living in our community. May he not shy away from problems that appear too daunting. When he finds his confidence waning or his support weakening, may he reach into the depths and find in his soul the tenacity to forge ahead, guided by your light. Gracious God, call forth the best in your servant, Matt Meyer, that he is, that he will bring honor to his office and instill confidence in the people of Newcastle County who have entrusted him with this weighty responsibility. Embolden him with a burning desire to do the hard work of governing that he may become a true servant of yours and of our county and so that he may lead us to a future of promise. In your holy name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you for your words, Reverend Jones. They are inspiring and uplifting. Four years ago, I joined Newcastle County government as Chief Human Resources Officer, and then shortly thereafter as CAO. The last four years have been challenging, exhilarating, exhausting, and most importantly, rewarding. The County Executive has encouraged me and everyone in his cabinet to pursue better government for the people of the county, often reminding us that we are here only for a limited number of years to serve our neighbors of Newcastle County. During our first term, there have been challenges, opportunities and victories for our friends and neighbors, but there is no bigger challenge this county has ever faced than the one that presented itself last March one that has impacted everyone as a global pandemic froze life as we knew it. Our county executive was fiercely determined to figure out how we, Newcastle County, could help our most vulnerable to close the education gap, to balance healthcare and equality, and to make an invisible enemy more visible. He attacked these issues with fervor, working around the clock, and I have the text messages and emails to prove it. County Executive Meyer took a bold step by applying for and receiving $322 million of Federal CARES Act money to invest here in the county. Matt used his relationships in the entrepreneurship community to establish a statewide relationship with Curative, which helped lead Newcastle County in providing testing for anyone and everyone regardless of symptoms and occupation. We kicked off a full scale testing on June 1st, and then a week later, two sites per day, Monday through Saturday, 
administering nearly 289,000 tests at over 364 testing events since the beginning of summer. He supported innovative ways to track the pandemic through our sewers, leading to a groundbreaking partnership with MIT startup Biobot. Through the establishment of task forces, he ensured local nonprofits, community health centers, and innovative companies receive funding to help flatten the curve, to bridge the healthcare gap, and provide for our most vulnerable. In the past two months, Newcastle County has made two of the most exciting and critical investments Newcastle County has ever undertaken. In December, with unanimous support from County Council, CARES Act dollars were invested by purchasing the Sheraton South Hotel and converting it into a large scale emergency homeless shelter now known as the Newcastle County Hope Center. And just weeks ago, a partnership with Delaware State University to build a next generation genomics lab resulted in their first batch of completed COVID-19 tests. Innovation and risk is something you don't frequently hear about in government. Yet challenging times call for bold leadership. And in today's age, leadership matters. Ladies and gentlemen, it has been my pleasure to serve under the most diverse, innovative, caring, and authentic administrations in Newcastle government has ever seen. I am honored to play a key role in this administration. Thank you, Matt. I will now turn the program over to Judge Sleep and County Executive Matt Meyer for the formal swearing in portion of today's proceedings. Good morning, Ms. Meyer. Are you ready to take the oath? I am. Please Thank raise you, your. Sleep. You're welcome. Please uh, place your left hand on the Bible and raise your right hand, and repeat after me. I, Matthew Meyer. I, Matthew Meyer. Do proudly swear. Do proudly swear. To carry out the responsibilities. To carry out the responsibilities of the office of Newcastle County Executive. Of the off of the. To, yeah, have the responsibilities of the Office of, of Newcastle New County Executive. You're doing okay. Uh, to the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Freely acknowledging that. Freely acknowledging that. The powers of this office. The powers of the, this office. Flow from the people. Flow from the people. I am privileged to represent. I am privileged to represent. I further swear. I further swear. Always to place the public interest. Always to place the public interest. Above any special. Above any special. Or personal interest. Or personal interest. And to respect the right. And to respect the right. Of future generations. Of future generations. To share the rich. To share the rich. Historic and natural heritage of Delaware. Historic and natural heritage of Delaware. In doing so. In doing so, I will always uphold. I will always uphold and defend the constitutions and defend the constitutions of my country and my state. Of my country and my state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you and welcome to all of you viewing this virtual event as we continue to focus on keeping you and your family safe uh, and remain laser focused on eliminating this deadly virus from our community. A special welcome to county council members, county employees and union leaders who've been models in pivoting to new ways of working this year. I also wanna start just by thanking uh, Judge Sleet. Uh, judge Gregory Sleet spent two decades as a federal judge appointed by President Bill Clinton at the recommendation of Senator Biden. And while Judge Sleet today is considered a renowned patent law and corporate law expert, 
He began his career for six years as a public defender in Philadelphia. Great lawyers have all the opportunities in the world. You, Judge Sleet, chose to pursue a career so those who did not have a lot could have equal access to justice. And it is an honor that you're here to swear me in today. And we have and will continue to run our county government following your motto with both intellectual precision and the compassion for equal justice that has guided your career. So thank you, sir. I'm also honored to be joined today by Reverend Dr. Greg Jones of Westminster Presbyterian Church and Rabbi Douglas Krantz. Both Reverend Jones and Rabbi Krantz have throughout their careers used their pulpits to look out for the least among us, to use both their language and their actions to identify our most challenging problems and lead our communities together. It is an honor that you both are sharing words with us today. I also recognize there are so many people watching today who have worked tirelessly for us to have this incredible opportunity to serve. Too numerous to mention, many of you have been with me since the beginning, Ali and Jeremy and Becky and Noah, and of course, mom and dad, you've been with me like sort of before the beginning since the, the, it really started for me. And thank you for remaining so spiritually close though physically distant during these trying times. And thank you so much to many of my supporters and all of those across the community for all that you are doing each and every day to keep our friends and neighbors safe during this challenging time. We have the most extraordinary county government staff that Newcastle County has ever had, a diversity that reflects our community and expertise and integrity that is truly second to none. Uh, Vanessa Phillips, Andrea Almond, and Eric Razor Schram lead a team that has created jobs like never before, infused mental health and behavioral health into policing and co increased community policing like never before, preserved more open space than in decades, initiated the most ambitious series of green environmental reforms to preserve our land, air, and water, and reduce blight and vacant properties across our county at a faster rate than ever before in county history. Thank you. I also wanted to take a moment to honor our first responders. When Governor Carney months ago wisely told all of us to shelter at home, some still had to go to work, putting themselves and their families at considerable risk, at the time, a totally unknown risk. Paramedics, police officers, EMTs, emergency communicators, and firefighters working to keep us safe, responding to incidents even when they know or do not know there are COVID-19 positive individuals who are getting in their ambulance or their police car. You have continued operations essential to keeping us all safe. Your work and your heroism 24 seven, even right now while I am speaking is critical to our ability to get through this. We, all of us, owe each of you and your families a debt of gratitude. Since March, working with County Council, we have fashioned a response to COVID-19 that has saved lives and has truly led the nation. In seven months, we have hosted 364 COVID-19 testing events and administered over 289,000 tests. This, this testing has saved lives. It is easier and faster to get tested here than in nearly every other county in the country. We've provided support for tens of thousands of meals for families who have needed, who, who, tens, of, uh, tens of thousands of meals for families who have never needed food assistance before and provided funding to 2,149 small businesses and nonprofits directly impacted by the pandemic. So what have we learned from all this? One day, hopefully within weeks or months, all of our children will be back in school attending in-person classes. We will all be able to go back to work in our offices. We'll be able to shake hands again and embrace and be close again. I wanted to take a quick moment to learn from our recent experiences. What we have seen in fighting this pand what, what we have seen in fighting this pandemic that we can use in the next four years. Once this pandemic is over, what will we have learned? You know, unfortunately, we've seen the stark inequalities between people of means and those more challenged right here in Newcastle County. And in recent months, those inequalities have only become worse. When I was in fourth grade, I took a bus each morning from where we lived off Shipley Road in Brandywine 100 to Harlan Elementary School. After school, we would sometimes go to the old George Gray School off Vandiver Avenue. I was a suburban kid being bused into a city school. 
the quality of education students of color in the city of Wilmington received simply could not compare to the education in schools outside of the city of Wilmington. Even as a fourth grader decades ago, I saw the inequality. Children of color right here in Newcastle County did not have the educational opportunity of other children. And now, what is the situation? Sadly, in too many respects, it is even worse. Those students who were falling behind before the pandemic may now be falling further behind. We risk losing a generation of children, shockingly, for a lifetime. If you cannot afford high-speed internet at home, and if you do not have access to a good computer, you really cannot even go to school. It is shocking how many students have no available computers and are forced to manage solely with their cell phones. The educational opportunity gap that was unacceptable decades ago, unacceptable one year ago, is getting so much worse. The bottom line, as we embark on this new year, on this new term of four years, over two decades into the 21st century, economic challenges are dooming too many children, too many families, essentially barring them from the classroom. It is obvious if you do not have the basic tools, if parents are not able to assist when you face technical difficulties, if your home is not quiet and conducive to academic concentration, then the prospects of success are rigged against you. We have an obligation, all of us, to acknowledge these inequities and prevent a whole generation from falling into a lifetime of risk. That is an obligation that extends beyond this pandemic. And the classroom is not the only place we have seen such stark inequality. For years, we have known that families across our community do not have access to quality medical care. For too many Black and Latino families, that has meant greater risk of contracting COVID. Before the pandemic, we would talk about how too many in our community do not have access to quality medical care. In a pandemic, these inequalities have caused too many marginalized citizens to mourn loved ones. For our homeless population, who for too long have not had access to quality mental and behavioral health and domestic abuse services, and for immigrants, for parents trying to afford basic childcare, this pandemic has created an unfair and devastating divide. Let's be clear, at the same time, the pandemic has also provided insight into how we can better address some of these very serious problems. One year ago, if you had proposed converting a high-end hotel into the largest homeless shelter in Delaware history with comprehensive mental and behavioral health job training and case management services, I would tell you that could not be done, or at best, it would take many, many years. Yet last month, we opened the Newcastle County Hope Center in just two weeks with the extraordinary leadership of Kerry Casey and Nicole Waters. One year ago, if you proposed monitoring our sewers as a community health tool, I would have told you that would take years to implement. Back in May, within days of learning of the technology out of an MIT incubated company, our excellent environmental services team under the leadership of Mike Harris began measuring coronavirus in our communities using our sewers and demonstrating much earlier than expected the depth of the problem. Newcastle County's successful sewer monitoring has now been profiled around the world, including weeks ago by Rachel Maddow on MSNBC. One year ago, if you proposed putting educational innovation in the hands of teachers, I would tell you the logistics might defeat us, and at the very least, the implementation would take a long, long time. Three months ago, we entered a partnership with a national nonprofit called Donors Choose. Teachers went online and wrote proposals to improve instruction and teach safely in a pandemic. As of today, tens of thousands of students in 1,675 classrooms across our state are being served by this program. One year ago, if you proposed partnering with Delaware State University to create a next generation genomics laboratory to provide the highest quality fast COVID-19 test processing to underserved communities and serve as an early pandemic detection device, I would tell you that would take years. We proposed it a few months ago. And thankfully, next week, Dell State student athletes will have their COVID tests evaluated through this laboratory right here over on Kirkwood Highway. Our new facility has advanced medical machinery similar to that which was used just 12 months ago to, in record time, initially sequence uh, the genome of the virus in China. This is cutting edge technology right here 
in Newcastle County at Delaware State University. It is amazing the things that we can truly accomplish and the problems we can address with urgency when we come together. The past 12 months have been horrible for so many of you, so many of us, so many in our community, excruciating personal losses, loved ones buried without funerals, no way to safely and appropriately honor our friends and relatives, economic devastation that we really haven't seen in our lifetimes, unprecedented mental and emotional challenges. There is a silver lining. We possess the ingenuity in Newcastle County and across Delaware, the leadership to tackle our most feared and overwhelming problems and to do so at lightning speed. And the reality is we have done so in the past year with no national leadership and little national partnership. With a former Newcastle County man in the White House, with President-elect Biden determined to provide leadership in collaboration with states, municipalities, and counties across our country, we are determined to emerge from this crisis faster and then to address age-old problems with newfound urgency. The reality is also that even with a vaccine program rolling out, we still need to be vigilant and not let our guard down against this invisible enemy. This week, we are completing the first dose of vaccinations for our paramedic and police officers. I will wait my turn and not get vaccinated until similarly situated individuals in the most severely impacted and underserved communities first have access to the vaccine. Now, I'm as eager as anyone to take the vaccine, but until you have the vaccine on the east side of Wilmington or on the Route 9 corridor, in the side streets of El Ellesmere or on farms outside of Townsend, I will wait my turn. And I know there's so much attention on the vaccine right now, so much hope that maybe we're taking steps to get out of this thing, but let's listen to medical experts. Vaccinating a large percentage of our community will take months, maybe even a year or longer, and we ne may never actually vaccinate enough of our county community. The fastest way for us to emerge from this is to rely on settled science and follow the pandemic protocols. Let's wear a mask, social distance, wash your hands with soap, stay at home when you can, be extremely cautious when you cannot, get tested, I know these times and our county has so much division, but we are truly in this together and we're only gonna emerge from this together. We're only gonna keep one another safe together. In closing, let's not forget the amazing things we've been able to do together just in the last few weeks and months and how we've been able to do it with record speed. As a community, we must push forward with new and real federal leadership producing that same urgency, even once this horrid pandemic is behind us. We, as a community, have so much to look forward to. If we work together, draw on our resiliency, our creativity, and all of our bold new ideas, we can address our oldest and most challenging problems. Thank you for all you have done. Thank you for this opportunity of a lifetime. I look forward to the tremendous challenge of building back together better than ever. God bless you. Thank you, County Executive Meyer. You have shown a consistent, courageous dedication to upholding Newcastle County as a government of laws, honesty, transparency, and integrity. Over the last four years, you have won the respect of your colleagues and the community, and we trust that you will continue to be fair, open-minded, and scholarly as you serve out your second term. We look forward to you leading the first county in the first state for another four years. It is now my honor to welcome Rabbi Douglas Krantz to deliver today's benediction. Ribono Shel Haolam, Sovereign of the Universe. We gather in convocation to celebrate the second swearing in of Matt Meyer as County Executive of Newcastle County, Delaware. We are keenly aware that the responsibilities of governing are not discovered in the lofty heights of the heavens but here in the low places where God's children live, love, work, go to school and play. We don't live in isolation. We live in proximity to our neighbors. That is why scripture teaches us, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Note the words of scripture. Scripture does not say care for or be responsible for but love your neighbors because loving incorporates both care and responsibility. 
As we gather here for the swearing-in ceremony, we are keenly aware that our neighbors are struggling. Too many are homeless, too many are hungry, too many lack resources, sufficient funds for food, for housing, for access to necessary technology. And all of that was true before the pandemic that now so grips our nation. Our partner in loving our neighbors in the hours and weeks of their desperate need is our Newcastle County government, housing and feeding and literally loving our neighbors in need of an outstretched human hand of kindness. These are not ordinary days. Yes, there will be the sunrise of a new Delaware president of the United States. But the work required of us is to always remember our neighbors and then to truly love them. That remains the work we share today and always. Today, we gather to celebrate the inauguration of a leader, a person with great skills, and most importantly, a compassionate human heart. Today, we are blessed by the presence of our leader, County Executive Matt Meyer, and we are committed to helping him go from strength to strength. Amen. Thank you for joining us here today. Happy New Year.